I, all right, all right. I think I'm looking for Dora to see if I've got thumbs up to get going. But I know that we we're we're all here gathered. We have the mayor um, and many other folks in our presence. So um, yes, putting the microphone better. Okay. So welcome everyone. I'm absolutely pleased to have all of you with us today to celebrate uh, the opening of the Patricia Handy Women's Center. Um, I just want to start, I know the mayor is going to acknowledge folks who are here, I will not do that, but just to tell you that um, I had the pleasure of working with Pat um, when I first worked for the district. She taught me a lot of what I know about homeless services, but beyond anything, Pat was a champion for the people first. She knew no matter what anybody was experiencing, she could fix that. If a, some, if a woman had lice, if a woman needed fresh clothes, if a, no matter what it was that somebody needed, she was out there, whether she was out there on her little scooter in the middle of the night in the snow uh, or, um, or in any other way, she, she was all about the people first. Um, she was an absolute champion for our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, cousins, aunts, uncles, who experience homelessness, about getting their immediate needs met, and about supporting them on a path to housing. I so wish that Pat could have been here today because she would have um, made, she would have been proud of this place, that we are finally upgrading the shelter services that we provide on the single side, and um, to women in particular, and that she would have, she absolutely would have um, told us that we were, she probably would have told us we were a little too late, that we should have done it faster, um, but that she would have been proud to be a part of it. And um, I'm so pleased that we can, in her memory, um, in all that she stood for, uh, be able to, to open uh, this center. Uh, so with that, I just want to welcome all of you uh, and look forward to um, hearing from others and, of course, to introduce our mayor, who has used her position to be also a true champion on the issue of homelessness. Well, good morning, everybody. I am very happy to see you all here for what is a remarkable occasion. Uh, let me acknowledge Dr. Handy and the Handy family. Give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Representing uh, their beautiful daughter. It's not often, actually, I think this is the third time um, in my government career that we have named a building for a government employee. Uh, and that is remarkable. And in each case, people have worked decades, um, sometimes unnoticed, uh, and real champions uh, out in the vineyard, as we say, um, getting the hard work done um, for people. Uh, and our team, who has been over the last year very focused on how a prosperous city like ours can be more inclusive and more focused on the most vulnerable among us. And uh, that is my commitment uh, still. How can a city as prosperous and wise? Washington, give more people a fair shot, give more people a second chance, give more people a safe place to land while they get uh, all of the aspects of their lives together so that they can be on a path to permanency. Uh, and that's why we're here. We're in a wonderful Ward 2 community, and I know some Ward 2 commissioners are here. John Fanning, give him a round of applause. <laughs> And the uh, commission chair and SMD commissioner, John Tempe, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Our deputy mayor for human serv health and human, serv human services, <laughs> health and human services, Brenda Donald, give her a round of applause. <laughs> You've already heard from Laura Zeilinger, who is at Human Services. Polly Donaldson is here, who uh, leads our housing and community development. And Admiral Chris Weaver, uh, who leads our construction arm. Uh, we also have our, our Commission on Women's Policy here and represented. Give them a big round of applause. 
We so appreciate uh, the focus on how uh, we will make all Washingtonians prosper here. So I didn't get a chance to know Pat. Uh, I know by all assembled here that she was a, a beautiful spirit and focused on making sure people have uh, a second chance. She worked for us for 32 years and she was focused on homelessness for nine of those years. Uh, and we hope that this building will be a tribute uh, to all that she stood for. When people experience homelessness, we believe they should have a safe and big, dignified place to sleep at night. Uh, we believe that we should provide for emergency housing, but also make sure that we have the services available so people uh, who experience homelessness, it will be a brief experience and a non-recurring experience. Uh, we know uh, that each night, roughly 7,000 men, women, and children experience homelessness in Washington, D.C. We also know it doesn't have to be that way. When I became mayor, I pledged uh, that we would set out a goal uh, to make homelessness rare, brief, and non-recurring. And we put up the money with the council, a down payment on a plan that can work if our commitment is solid. Uh, la yes, just yesterday, uh, we announced a citywide plan, an all eight ward strategy that will help us make the investments in ending family homelessness. 271 units all over Washington, D.C. Imagine that. 271 units all over Washington, D.C. And yesterday, quite remarkably, I was in a meeting with uh, members of the council who stepped up with us in the fall and said, you know, this is just not just the mayor's work over here. This is the work that we all have to undertake. Uh, and they stood up with us on the budget and legislation. And yesterday, they also stood up with us to say that you have a good plan. You've identified great locations and wonderful neighborhoods that have services. Um, and these are small, dignified dignified uh, facilities that will allow people to get back on their feet. Uh, and so today we, uh, in the Patricia on the, or the Pat Handy Center, uh, we will be able uh, to see a, a also a very dignified building. And I know that we also have uh, the building owners here, uh, the, develop, the development team is Rock Creek, right? Give them a round of applause. Because guess what? The government can't do it by itself. Uh, we have leaned on property owners all over the city um, to partner with us and work with us to make sure that vulnerable families and people have a place to stay. Uh, I was at DC General last night, and we got, we want to work with some other property owners that are that own small uh, apartments, right? That own a, you know are small housing providers is the term of art, uh, and we want to make sure that that they know that we need their help too. We want them to work with us so that people that we're supporting in a lot of ways, once they leave an emergency housing situation like this, they have affordable housing uh, to transition into. Uh, and that's important too. So I want to once again thank everybody, um, leaders past and present and future who helped us get here today so the, the Pat Handy uh, Center here can be a part of our plan uh, to end homelessness in Washington, D.C. So I think Laura has what's next for us on the agenda. There will be an opportunity uh, to take a look around. Uh, and for Assembled Press, uh, once we conclude this, this part of the program, I'll be available to, to answer questions. So uh, Council Member Alexander was um, very disappointed that she could not make it. She personally um, has a connection with um, the Handy family. On her behalf, um, Yolanda was going to say just a few brief words. Yolanda, you want to come on up um, and do that quickly, please? My name is Yuandra Barlow, and I'm here on behalf of Councilmember Yvette Alexander, who represents Ward 7 and is the chair of the Committee on Health and Human Services. Councilmember Alexander wishes that she could be here today, but she is currently chairing the annual performance oversight hearing for the Department of Healthcare Finance. I am here to read a brief statement in her absence. 
I am so excited about the opening of the Patricia Handy Place for Women. This facility, which will provide emergency and transitional housing for women experiencing homelessness, is a fitting tribute to the life of Pat Handy. All who knew Pat can attest to her commitment to elevating and improving the lives of those experiencing homelessness. She dedicated her life to public service and the residents of the District of Columbia, working tirelessly on behalf of our most vulnerable neighbors. I want to extend greetings to Dr. Perry Handy and his wife, who I consider as a part of my extended family. Finally, I would like to thank Mayor Bowser, um, Deputy Mayor Donald, and the Director of the Department of Human Services, Laura Zeilinger, for making this happen today. This is a perfect way to honor the many contributions of Pat Handy. I know that she will be pleased. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Landra. Um, and, and we know that uh, the council member of this ward, Jack Evans, uh, also had hoped to be here, is not. And, but Shanette on his team is here um, on his behalf. And we are very pleased of the partnership and his support as well for our efforts. Next, I. <laughs> That's right. Um, next, I am also honored to introduce Sue Marshall, the executive director of the Community Partnership, uh, to say a few brief words. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor Bowser, Dr. Handy, Mrs. Handy, and the rest of the Handy family, and to all assembled. I'm very pleased and honored to have this opportunity to speak to you about the opening of this wonderful, wonderful facility. Before doing that, I want to congratulate, thank, and appreciate the mayor for the eight ward strategy, which is really a game changer. It is also quite fitting to kick this off at a women's center. We should all remember that all of the women who will be served here are part of someone's family. I'm exceptionally pleased to have a part on the program. Pat Handy was a wonderful colleague, but more than that, a treasured, treasured friend. Pat was passionate about the work that we do. She was persistent in her advocacy for all whom we serve, and she was extremely persuasive <laughs> in terms of getting the job done. So again, thank you all for attending. I encourage all of us to represent what Pat represented and will continue to represent for us as we proceed in putting some exceptional programming in this building to match the classy building in which we are. Thank you all very much. Um, and next I'd like to welcome Dr. Handy to say some words. Walker <laughs> makes me feel so helpless. <laughs> okay, uh, I had back surgery recently, and uh, I'm uh, resigned my faith to to be with this for, for a few months, and hopefully I'll get out of with this and and move upward. Uh, I'm upwardly mobile, and I'll move upward to a cane. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to express gratitude for honoring my daughter by naming the shelter. Is it Pat Handy's place or Patricia Handy's place? 
Pat Handy? It's Patricia. Oh, hey, thank you. <laughs> I want to be correct here. <laughs> um, I'm really so proud. And uh, I'd just like to say, Patty had this wonderful supervisor uh, who many of you know. Uh, his name is Fred Swan. Fred, where are you? <laughs> okay. I wish you'd come up here where we could see you because he's a special person uh, in Patty's life. Mm -mm. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. Uh, come on, Fred. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but... Uh, <laughs> but but we know that you can handle a situation like this because uh, I remember the many uh, hearings I observed when you all were engaged in hearings with the uh, councilman from that ward, Mr. Mr. Graham. Yes, Mr. Graham. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> and um, Mr. Graham would, uh, I think he enjoyed maybe trying to torture Fred, <laughs> but... <laughs> But he, 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 was, he was always stymied because Fred always had an answer for him. I don't care what the question was. Fred would look around for a moment, compose himself, and then come out with an excellent answer. So now Patty um, and Fred were really very good friends. And I just want to say to many of you who don't know Fred, he's really a wonderful man. A wonderful person, okay? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, um, and you see, all through Patty's career in the D.C. government, uh, I had never known her to really like her supervisor, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and she, we, we'd get together, and she would be talking about this wonderful supervisor, Fred. Fred this, Fred that. And so he became a mythical creature to me. <laughs> Uh, however, at one point, I was able to meet him, and then I realized just what a good person he was. So, uh, Fred, would you go on and say a word or two? That's all I want you to do for this. I don't want you to give a long speech or anything. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you for acknowledging me, but more importantly, thank you for being here. Thank you for being Pat's father. She was a wonderful woman I love working with, a great friend. Mm -hmm. And I always say this, that um, the measure of a man is the relationship with his daughter, and you guys had a great relationship, so I know you're a great man, mm -hmm. and I just thank you. Well, thank you so much, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. All right. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. Isn't he fine? Yeah. <laughs> I guess in more ways than one, La ladies. <laughs> Okay, uh, but uh, Patty, Patty would be so pleased uh, regarding this occasion because caring for the homeless was really a priority in her life, and you've heard certain things about her already. Um, and a most significant and favorite segment of the programs provided by the agency is that of the shelter hotline. She was in love with the hotline and all the personnel involved. And I'd like to ask, is Ms. Ruth Walker present, who was a team leader at that time? Ms. Ruth? Ms. Walker? Where are you? Come out, come up. I'm here so we can, I want, I want everybody to see you, because Patty held you in such high esteem. And you don't have to make a speech. <laughs> Just wave. <laughs> if you'd like to say something, you're welcome to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is very emotional for me because Pat was my friend. And we did a lot of things together. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank And thank you, my dear. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. You see, she surrounded herself with good people. Yeah. That's, that's the mark of a, a good worker. Um, I did want to close my jacket uh, before I started. 
you know, normally when the people come up to speak, <laughs> men have clothes their jackets. But I was unable to, when I made the trial run this morning, <laughs> my jacket was hiked so high because of this bulky sweater <laughs> and, a, and a, gaining in, a gaining in weight. So I hope you'll bear with me with the uh, open jacket. Uh, we were mentioning the hotline, and I just want to indicate some of the responsibilities of that program. Uh, the program provides comfort outreach to individuals who refuse to seek the comfort of a shelter. And you all are quite aware of a number of people who sleep outside because of various reasons in terms of non-attendance at uh, shelters. Uh, as I understood the program, if folks would distribute blankets, food, water, shoes, boots, and also provide medical attention for referral uh, to many other services throughout the city. And although Patty held a management position, one would have believed that she was a full-fledged member of the hotline team that went out to <laughs> and did work in the community and did these things I just mentioned. And she was truly gratified when she had the opportunity to assign some clients to their own apartments, as will be happening at some point in the future, or provide preliminary assessments for mental health purposes. <clears throat> well now, do I need you? <laughs> No, I have it, baby. <laughs> Thank you. But I'd like to say this before we move on. She developed a high degree of rapport with the team members, and they with her. One member in particular constructed an acrostic in her honor, and he asked for permission to read this acrostic at Patty's funeral ceremony. He voiced the sentiments of himself and team members as he enthusiastically read with feeling. The name of the acrostic is What Mrs. Patricia Handy, or rather Ms. Ms. Patricia Handy means to the shelter hotline. And the gentleman who is a member of the team, uh, his name is uh, Mr. Vincent Bones Blackson. Is he here today? Ms. Bones, ma'am? Out in the vehicle. Oh, fine. I do understand. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you so kindly, my dear my loving wife. <laughs> what Ms. Patricia Handy means to shelter hotline. S is for sharing all the knowledge you hold inside. H is for the helping hand you always gave time after time. E is for giving every minute in your busy day. L is for letting us in your life in each and every way. T is for you taking the time to make sure hotline was always all right. E is for every time you defended shelter hotline and put up a fight. R is for you just remembering all of the less fortunate people. H is for holding shelter hotline to a high standard and treating us as an equal. O is for other people other than yourself. T is for teamwork and not just setting our homeless people on a shelf. L is for the life that you breathe into our organization. I is for inviting us in and putting us in a better situation. N and E are for never, ever, ever letting shelter hotline 
down. Mrs. Handy, Ms. Handy, from all of us to you, we love and miss you so much. And in our heart and mind, you will always be around. Love you, Ms. Handy, by Vincent Bones Blackson, November 2012. It's Mr. Bones. <laughs> I certainly wish Mr. Bones or Mr. Blackson <laughs> would be here today because uh, I wanted him to help me with this, but I fumbled through it as best I could. Now, at this point, in closing, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, some folks who are here on Patty's behalf, uh, Dr. Karen Jones and her husband. Are you here, uh, Karen? All right. Just come up, just come up. Please don't applaud until we, we call all these names, which are just a few. This is Karen. She was one of Patty's very close friends, and she's a veterinarian and a wonderful person, okay? That's mm -hmm. <laughs> another one of my children. Um, Mr. Melvin Johnson, he had to leave. Dr. Gilbert Hoffman, where are you? Come on up. People want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of my very close friends, very close, uh, Dr. Johnny Fairfax. Johnny? Oh, he's so cool, you know, he has to, he has to make people wait on him. <laughs> and here are a cousin or two, uh, Joe Ellen County. Joe Ellen? She's there somewhere. She's in a bag. As much as you love publicity, <laughs> Joe Ellen, where are you? <laughs> uh -oh, she, here she comes. Maybe she's also taking us. You know, she was a public information officer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Joe Ellen, thank you. And I want to especially thank Joe Ellen because she helped me in the writing of the, um, what do you call that, the obituary. Remember? Family paper. Yeah, okay. Uh, we were looking for her sister and cousin, but they aren't here, Victoria Gray and Gail Gray. So, uh, Joellen, I wish you would just say a word in terms of how you helped with the um, obituary. Well, Perry, I guess the thing I really want to say about Patty mm -hmm. is that as a family member, I knew Patty all her life, so it was really surprising to me when I went to work at DC Emergency Management in 2000, I guess, to be working with Patty. And the story I always tell is some big snowstorm. I spent the night in my office in the Reeves Center. I'm sad. I'm like, oh, God, you know, it's a cot. It's... And then someone came in and said, you know, Pat Handy spent the night over at Banneker in the rec center running a homeless shelter. So then I didn't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> but um, it was really, it was, it was a revelation. That's all I'll say. I mean, our agency worked closely with her. Um, and and um, it, it, it was just so interesting to me to see her blossom and become the person that she was from the little girl <laughs> that I knew. So, mm -hmm. Thank you, Joellen. Thank you very much. Gil, would you like to say anything? No, it, uh, except to say that um, I watched Patty grow up and I knew how passionate she was about certain things and the convictions she had. And someone used the word perseverance. That personified Patty. Um, we loved her and still do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dr. Johnny Fairfax. Normally I would pass, but <laughs> <laughs> Patty was a great friend. Uh, we attended undergrad together at Howard University. She was a go getter there. And in her uh, career with the DC government, she was a go getter as well. Thank you. All right. Would you give all of them a hand now, please? <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming. I especially want to thank the mayor for being here and voicing her sentiments. Thank you very much. I'm one of the award folks. <laughs> and at this point, I'm going to end the program by saying thank you for accepting me, and I love all of you. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> okay. Here, let me get this stuff on. Mm-mm. And now I'll hobble on back to my humble seating. Thank you, Dr. Handy, and thank you to all of Pat's family and friends. I want to say um, we heard a lot of love in today's program, and we heard about Pat's tenacity. And love is um, part of who we are as a DHS family. I see lots of folks from the DHS family here, and it's about how we deliver our services. We're so happy to cut the ribbon now with the mayor, so we're going to do that just over here, and um, then invite people to take tours afterwards. Excuse me, is this going to be a diverse homeless shelter? Yes, ma'am. I'm currently trying to get an open-door women's shelter with Albert Johnson, and three black women have gotten ahead of me in line. I've repeatedly uh, emailed Ms. Laura and the mayor's office asking for assistance. It's supposed to be first come, first serve, and I still don't have a bed. So I'm asking, is this going to be a diverse building that I can we serve all Washingtonians. I can't answer your question right now. There's three of them so far in this document. Thank you. So we're going to cut the ribbon, and then uh, we're going to give a, like a two-second reset, and then I'll talk to the press right back here. Okay. So can I 